This is your daily market recap for Thursday, September 15th, 2022. Let's go. Hey everyone, this is my channel to help investors and traders develop a probability-based mindset to succeed. Also try and keep friends informed of what's going on in the markets and the economy, and also a little real estate content as well. This is Dan Max at ESP Realty, aka The Trading Agent, and this is your daily market recap for Thursday, September 15th, 2022. Hopefully people are, I guess, best way to do it, surviving. Chopex. A lot of people hate this week because it can be rather frustrating. Market can do a million different things. Seems like it has its own mind. One minute you think it's going up, next week it's going down. Beginning of the week it looks like it's all good. good. Pulls the rug. Now at the lows. Yeah, it's not easy. And let's just say that as much as you want to try to be able to predict the markets, it's hard enough to just predict what's going to happen day to day. I, you know, me personally, just. It is what it is. I mean, it's I've seen this before. I know just to survive. That's the goal here this week is not to put yourself in a position to get absolutely buried. Because if you do, well, then guess what? It could be difficult to come back. So on that note, you know, just please be safe out there. You know, preserve capital first. That's always what I would say is the, the most important thing. So on that note, um, just to start off on the ES futures, I would be watching this whole this area between i don't know just mid 30 3800s a lot of people are calling for the end of the world we know how that usually goes the end of the world doesn't happen however the fedex news after hours it's pretty bearish but again i mean if anybody who didn't see this coming not surprised they talked about slowing uh shipments yada yada i mean everyone knows the economy's slowing that's not not a question and so maybe that's ultimately what's keeping the market flat to down because a lot of people always ask the same question, you know, like, how do you know this? is Why is this? Why, why, why? I say this all the time. Sometimes the why does not provide itself to when after the fact. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Bitcoin, sideways. Not really bullish, not really bearish. It just, it's tough to say. I mean, if you're long, be careful. If you're short, be careful. There's really nothing much to say other than watch your levels. Uh, oil, talked about popping, flopping. Now, the rumors that they were going to cap oil or refill the SPR at 80, I think those are that's bull crap. I mean, not like literal, more like BS, just in general. I still think at some point you're going to get into the 60s. When? Oh, good question. Nobody knows. Uh, on that note, just be, I mean, it, I, the market's going to see oil come down. And it's just a matter of whether how the market reacts to that. Uh, spy? Retesting last week's lows. Um, this is where I struggle because I mean we're probably going to gap down tomorrow, and is it going to look like? I mean, is it going to play this game like this, where you get like this gap down in two day range, or is it going to be a gap down and then rip right back up? We don't know. This is the hardest part about what's going on right now. Is everyone's bearish. I, I, you know, we talk about the best moves have the market out of position, in a sense of like people are all bullish and then they pull a rug, or everyone's bearish and then it rips face on them. I personally think at this point, you just got to be level based. You know, if it breaks slower, if you got to take your profits on, I mean, so hopefully you still have some shorts. That, that was always part of this. And if you're short or got some longs, I mean, you, you just got to go. Now, again, I anticipate the market probably does rally into the FOMC next week because what is known is known. Now, how that reacts, I mean, the 75 basis points, I mean, there's not going to be 100. But at this point, I have a feeling you're going to start seeing what? The 50 basis point cut. Like the feds are going to start talking about pivot. You know, this whole pivot crap just never ends. So on that note, just be safe. I don't know. Again, we don't know anything. We have to just be cognizant of put call ratios, blast it with puts. Big ES short position to hedge. And we're going into earnings. And we got the feds. I mean, if you go look at the stock traders almanac next week, pretty bearish. Pretty, pretty bearish. Now, this is one of the things that's, in my opinion, the hardest part about sometimes the seasonality in stock traders almanac is that what you have here potentially is some sort of head and shoulders pattern. And now again, this is where I think this gets tricky is that it's very complex. Door could open and just pull right out and goodbye. 
Or I could play this game where people can say, oh, that's the left shoulder, the right shoulder, here's the head, probably, and it could bounce. I personally have a 50-50 probability mindset here at this point, because I don't know for sure. But I don't like to see the market bearish. I mean, go look. I mean, I scrolled through my Twitter feed today. OMG. Dollar. Sorry, a little out of order. Just want to talk about some of the things in practice. Talked about it, holding the 29s. Tight action. Is it about to pull back? I don't know. Watch the levels. That's all. I mean, that's all you really can do. Bonds, we talked about. We've been building position in bonds, waiting for next week's feds. Just to guarantee that we're probably good, just in case we get another retest. I'd like to see it float up, pull back, and then go. We'll see. Look at this area. We talked about every day that long term, there's going to be a pop if the market's going to get bamboozled. And when I mean bamboozled, just the whole market in general is going to be, you know, even Gunlock is screaming it. Like, there's going to be deflation based off of the high rates of inflation. I mean, and, and again, does that now mean deflation like negative 2%? Um, CPI, no. But it's going to be down month over month, year over year, when you start getting back to like recent levels or the, the most recent readings. Uh, the VIX, we've talked about this, and, and you know some of the friends in the Discord room were like, what is going on here? And this is where it was rather confusing to me today too because we talk about if the market's going to peel like an onion, you expect the VIX to start popping. Ooh, this is very complacent action. I mean, this is where, you know, things that don't look bearish to me. And this is where we'll run bearish and bullish things that I think. And so the first thing I like, I'd like to see the TLT holding. Again, the market really hates when rates are super volatile. Now, if they're stable, the market's typically okay with that. You know, the dollar, is it making a lower high? Is it holding up? I mean, hard to say. At this point, it just doesn't seem to have the juice to get over the 27, 28 area. That's rather confusing. But that's what the market does sometimes. If you pretend that you know, you don't. Um, QQQ, considering it was down, I don't know, for one and two, almost 2%. I mean, look at this, nothing, nothing. Things that are confusing. So we talked about the SPY, right? 390, you got it, just <sighs> tough. And now again, remember the VIX is a volatility and not necessarily a fear indicator. And so the volatility is actually compressing if you look at the action because the Here's a bigger candle, and then you're like it's it's more like candle size. That's kind of one of the important things. QQQ trend line, trend line alert. I mean, you got to hold down here. Now again, if it gaps down tomorrow, if it gaps down on the morrow, what do you do? Pray. This is the hardest thing about gap downs at the open on a Friday opex. I don't know if I don't trust them. Just don't trust them. I don't know if it'll ultimately end up spilling and then coming right back. But you gotta have a plan. You gotta know what you can lose. And if you if you're wrong, you can always stop out and buy whatever you need to buy. IWM, things that aren't bearish. This is where here's one thing that does not look bearish. Like the IWM just not even back to the lows. We not agree, like not even back. Spy, QQQ, IWM, not at all. Confusing, right? Mm-hmm. Gold, things to me that aren't bearish. Like, I. here we go. Now we're starting to see the volume. I'm at, what did I tell you, folks? What did I tell you, folks, who are always screaming at me about gold? I'm going to sing my song. No, I'm just kidding. I feel bad, honestly. I mean, I told you, everybody who bought up here was going to get proven wrong at some point. And we break the lows. Something's coming. Is there a ceasefire? I don't know. Is there something? There's so many things that don't really make sense at the moment because of OPEX. And maybe the news doesn't present itself till only later, like FedEx. I mean, seeing gold starting to slip and break below, I mean, <laughs> bearish and bullish. I mean, you could make the case that, all right, well, the market's about to peel. Here's the onion, and everything's getting thrown out. I'm just, you know, some of the times you're right, sometimes you're wrong when you're trying to, you know, predict everything basically, which potentially we're trying to do. This is one thing I knew I would be right on. And here we go. <laughs> Spill. We told people to leave it alone. Silver, same thing. I think at some point now people are saying, oh, look at the gold to silver ratio. Yeah, woohoo. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. Gold to copper ratio. The gold to peanuts ratio. The gold to whatever ratio. Green beans. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I still think then this is what's good if silver does hold up and the market 
melts, but it's just not possible. I mean, it's a paper game. It's going to get blown out. I don't know how low it goes. I don't even want to say anything else. That's, that's all it really is. GDX. Oh, they're holding up higher. Yeah, and then gold. But these things have gotten absolutely stormed, broken, right? Like, and here was, like, the important levels to hold. I mean, you can't even see how far this goes back. But think about it. Like, if this is, like, gold's... Here's gold's, like, chop channel, like, 158. GDX is already way below it. So, I mean, just as I said, wait for the capitulation in the market. Wait for the feds to pivot. Wait for the VIX to spike in the 50s or 60s because then you can buy this stuff and put it and store it because when that happens, the feds are going to pivot shortly after. Gold will know it. It'll bottom. All this stuff will bottom. GDX, I talked about being the better one of the two. <sighs> Watch out below. AG, hey, talked about it popping. Congrats. <laughs> Coming back. Zanumont, somebody came after me pretty hard on Stockfoot's like, you're crazy, man. I'm like, dude, you are crazy because you don't realize that at a certain point, even in the 2008 stuff, Numont looked like, hey, that looks okay. Bam. Like Chef Everell, bam. Just gone. Gone. And again, it, it wasn't fundamental. Well, here we go. Even after this big smash, this thing has no love. Getting no love, none, no love. Got no love for the miners, and guess what? They're still loved, which I don't get. I mean, go look at stock twits. Or maybe it's just my feed, because Twitter's like, or sorry, stop, go to Twitter. I mean, I've never seen so many people bullish all the time in a trade, and it just not work. Other than meme stocks, which get obliterated, and they have. Pass. And here we go. And here we go. Come on down. Come on down. I mean, there's really nothing to say. Just please be safe. Please, 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 please be safe. That's all I can. That's literally all I can say. A lot of people are doing what? They're thinking A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I'm telling you right now, you gotta leave it alone. And the only one that to me is interesting is AEM. I've said this because it has volume down here from previous. It's coming back down. It's gonna come right back down. Just please be safe. Uh, X, remember Nucor guided yesterday, got beaten. X came out and guided, said their guidance is gonna be fine. Steel D said the same thing. <sighs> Love these names. Come on back. Let them come in. Just, I'm telling you, just leave them alone. Nucor, told you. Love it. Guided, I mean, their guidance doesn't matter at this point. Everybody knows that they can guide strong, weak, whatever. The economy is slowing naturally. It's not a straight line move. The market just doesn't implode all of a sudden at once. Unless something bad, really bad happens, you want the burn down and then the last leg, big spike. Here we are into an old trend line. Just, I don't know, leave it alone. Valet, same thing. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. CCJ. Ay, caramba. Ay, caramba. Talked about it. Nothing safe. Uranium folks. Oh, we're going to the moon. And it's like, no, you're going to the center of the earth first. I, I mean, I don't know what the best way to describe it is. No, but you're getting, you're going to get pounded. That's what's going to happen first. I'm sorry to say that. That's just the nature of the beast. Now, it doesn't mean it has to, it's going to go there tomorrow. It's just if the market peels, which it will eventually at some point and get ugly, it's going to go down. Sorry. I, I mean, I don't know. Arrow, same thing. Look for the sevens, eights. I mean, all this stuff could get whacked even more. Mosaic, things that aren't necessarily bearish. I mean, these names were holding up. The ag names were pretty flat today. Not surprised. CF, down two points. Nah, not as bullish, but still holding up pretty good. Again, I, I mean, I personally believe that the market is going to play this game where Tech goes up, commodities come down. Then everything goes down, commodities rally, tech flat, then commodities drop, tech rot pops, and then it goes lower. I mean, it's just like gonna be like this recircling of things where funds just flow around. You have to remember that. Money isn't destroyed, it just rotates. It dances to its own tune. The lambada, the forbidden dance. AMD, let's get into tech, speaking of. This doesn't look that bearish to me. I'm sorry. I was like looking at this stuff today. I'm like, I'm like, what the? 
I'm like the cues are down what and this is what it's like what say what no i mean it's obviously the waiting with microsoft apple and some of the other names doesn't look that bearish smh Ugh. same thing just holding here i, I mean again they've, they've been creamed you know 320 down to 200 i think it's gonna get sloppy and choppy i just I, it's really hard to expect this move whoosh, pretty fast which we talked about to not have just a i mean you see how this played out like this uh, <laughs> bam like i feel like we need that and if that means how long was this take six weeks might be six eight weeks i don't know it just doesn't feel right to me and when i say feels right right wrong whatever everybody's bearish I, I, just, mm, I always get very nervous when everybody's bearish as you should too because if you're in a position and everybody's doing the same thing be aware of your surroundings we'll see how it plays out nvidia took out 130 again today and it's tight tight little tight little doge dogecoin it doesn't look that bearish Apple, ouch. 100 day, but then it came back. Look at the wick. I mean, it was, this is so hard. Everyone's going, oh, this was it. This was it. And then it dropped and they're in, in the same movement. And I'm like, uh, I can see why you think that. That makes sense. Repeating pattern, maybe. <sighs> hey, Alexa. No, I mean, at this point. Here is an answer I translated. Yeah, I bet you did. I bet you did. Etc. PP. Etc. PP. Dash greater than reinforced oh, and so on has its origin in Latin. What are you doing, love? Etc. Equals in the other. PP. Purge. PP. Purge. E I don't even know what that meant. Um. Anyway, this is tough because we are coming back into what the high volume range lows right here. Right. Let me pull this over. I mean, I honestly did not think we'd get to that, but there it is. Support equals resistance. We're at the next support. I don't know how long it's gonna take. I don't know how long. I don't know what's going on, but I, I'm telling you, something just feels fishy because I've seen this so many times where Apple announces what they're gonna do: a new phone, new something, yada yada. Doesn't blah 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 blah. New everything, and guess what? It rallies because CNBC has nothing to say. Then when it releases, then it goes down. Let's go through the tech gambit. Google making new lows but still it's just the channel lows now you have to remember like these names imagine if you've been and you know how we talk about like traders market look at this <laughs> but look at here same thing before it crested and fell over it rallied is it this are we at this point i don't know it's hard to know i mean i know i have this little baby trend line it's not that important but at this point it, ugh, ugh, don't no crm down a whopping five and a half points today right back <laughs> right back to the channel lows i i don't know i don't know here we're getting at points where you just gotta what you stops your logic your intelligence you just gotta i don't need but what's the best way to describe it to be safe how about that be safe that's all you can really do all right just and again you, you, you this, again, think about the sentiment. This is where it gets a little tricky. Mr. Softy came on down, 245. All right, here we are at the, you know, whatever you want to even say, the extreme range lows. Here we are. Here we are. Do we need a lot of this? I think we need a lot of this. But was this that to this to that? I don't know. Are we just in this point now? I don't know. Again, we anticipate the market coming down. I just... The hardest part here is the levels. You, you can't be all in bearish until what? You break the lows. And OPEX is just very tricky. I'm just telling you. Keep it simple, right? Amazon, after hours, I think they're down another punto or two. Give me a second. I'll look on the other screen. Down to 123.88. So 123.88 would be what? Mm, still, I mean, right, right around the range of lows. Not surprised, huh? We'll see. Things that aren't bearish. Netflix. It gets an upgrade today. Now again, I buddy pass maybe, but this thing was up ten points plus eleven puntos. Like, ugh, I'm sorry. It, it feels like it's coming back to the range highs again. 
held the 50 day now i know the wick is back down but this i saw so many freaking anomalies today it just made my eyes burn Roblox holding up real nice and tight not things that don't seem that bearish meta down two dollars Ooh, whoop de do holding i mean this formation could be a little bit of a bullish formation with volume because you have what big red you kind of have like a hammer wick and then you have like a true indecision candle open and close at the same price i'm not necessarily bullish or bearish just because it's below it but i mean I, if the market was down like as much as it felt like it was down today i would think it would get smoked micro strategy same thing like, i th would think this thing would be like bloody red big big red big red gum now i'll pull up adobe because they had their earnings this was pretty murderous but again things down from what 700 300 market maker had to absorb some volume here and i'm not saying he has to like rip it right back higher but i mean oof, i would be very nervous that this can pop tesla again up a point today what is going on what what's going on market seems bearish and this thing is just holding up germany announces that they're gonna stop their manufacturing of tesla and it, it's popping I'm like what what is going on things that don't seem that bearish and the aq just i mean this doesn't look that good actually now you got it looks like a little emmy an m pattern but the volume nah. we'll see we'll see because i mean i think you can see very clear as day there's a what there's a volume node and here now that's two points it might look bigger than it is but that's what it is i would watch that things that don't seem bearish xpa it was up a dollar and change today what is what is going on here what is going on other than big tech getting sold i think that just i feel like that has to unwind like the, the last leg to pull people in to absolutely smash the market is to get big tech to rip one more time up we'll see i could be wrong but things that don't look bearish i, I mean here you go let's let's jump into the financials like i was watching financials today and i'm like what is going on what i mean this is not taking out near the lows of the range from last week no it's just holding up high and tight i was watching morgan stanley i was like what are you doing what are you doing you're making higher highs and higher lows that's not bearish even crappy jp morgan making higher highs and higher like, what is going on what is going on expi was up a cent today what is even this piece of junk what UTHR up a dollar and change. I'm watching so much stuff going. What is going on? Look at that. Higher lot highs and higher look. Opex. Seriously. Some serious Opex junk, right? So, I mean, I mean, again, here's Steel D. They guided up today. Gapped up, held up, not great, but it held. I mean, Goldman Sachs, if the market's going to the hell in a handbasket, the stock shouldn't be going up. So a bunch of this crap. CSX, you had the rail stuff. I'm just kind of floating through a few of these. It came down, huge volume. You see that? Maybe they knew about um, the FedEx stuff. Just kind of watching it. Like somebody, again, if the rail stuff is gonna is behind us, does that mean it's gonna bounce back? I don't know, man. It's looking at some of the housing names. They look. I know. I know we're below last week's lows, but we're not like. We're not blowing out here. We're just making some indecisions. We're getting indecisive. Right? That's, I mean, ugh, right? Ugh. It's tough to know for, you know, 100%. But, again, just be thoughtful. I mean, even Best Buy was up. GameStop was up. A lot of these names made no sense were up. HYG, pull, again, I'm just floating through these before I get to oil. Back, it's not even back below friday last week's lows i don't know oil not surprised oil pulled back i mean we talked about it could it get up to the channel or is it 20 day but are we breaking down nah. this just looks like chop until it does natural gas nice work if you short it up here cool beans talked about getting them in the range but then it just pops and hits the 50 day we'll see xop now again if the market was about to get absolutely bludgeon why are we not back near 135 Oil's not holding up that well. Hmm. 
things that I don't think look bearish. Exxon Mobil, you would think this thing would be down like seven, eight dollars. Six, seven dollars. I don't know. Back to the twenty or fifty hundred day. What? No. I pulling out my hair, trying to figure out what to do. Things that don't look bearish, things that do look bearish. Again, I I personally struggle right here because I'm seeing so many anomalies where if the market looked like it was about to peel like an onion, you, you would see the financials getting blown out. You would see XBI getting thrashed. You'd see oil service names getting absolutely puked. They weren't. So, I, I mean, I don't know what to say. Let's look at Oxy. Yeah, holding up pretty well. Man, covered call king, selling his calls in the 70s. Told you when the put call ratio got a point two. Just please be safe out there. This is a struggle. Some people, I know I've got tons of haters. And again, usually when they come out the strongest, there's usually about something. It's about the flip. Please be safe. Please just, I mean, whatever in doubt. Like I sit here and I think to myself, we're really good at predicting the markets. But you know what? We can't predict every move. And people want to say, well, you need to do this and you need to do that and do that. And you get real complicated and things get real hard. And then guess what? All it takes is one mistake. And if you've listened this far in the video, you know that's the case. Because we feel like we've all been there. Where you start thinking like, well, I'll let this one go. I'll figure it out. I'll be okay. No. Your true goal here is to minimize losses and work with your gains. Oh, here another one. Arc. Like, Arc was up today. Like, what? What is this? You're telling me the market's about to absolutely implode and the freaking arc is not anywhere close to lows? I mean, things that aren't bearish. You see what I'm saying? Like, I, my head's about to explode. Because I would think arc would, you know, would be r literally leading the way to the freaking promised lands of pain. And it's not. Now, I'd see it needs to get over this node, but still. We not agree. Like, this is stuff. It's getting real choppy, real difficult, real hard. Be safe out there. I appreciate you guys. I know there's a lot to think about, but when in doubt, be safe. Keep an eye on the ES futures. I wouldn't be surprised again at some point. Do we get down here? We got another 10 or 15 points where it could drop. We'll see. FedEx member, culprit. Did they know? Of course. Remember, talk, remember write this down. Never forget us. You don't know sometimes until later because the news releases after the fact. Somebody knows something. All right? Talk to you guys and gals later. Peace. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, stop by the Discord room. A link is in the description below. Also, if you'd like to help support more free content, your PayPal link is in the description as well. I appreciate your continued support of the channel.